maybe technical, but does Joomla have to run the entire site, or can it be, like, can you do an HTML site? No, it has to, it has to be the entire site. Okay, so you can't run Joomla in, like, a frame or a you, table cell? Or I mean, you could, um, but it wouldn't wouldn't make a lot of sense. So it, it would make more sense to run Joomla and then put your other sites in a wrapper in this, because there's a wrapper feature. So as far as the design goes, you kind of have to either use an existing template or know how to, you have to work with the templates to modify the, the look of them. Um, and that's an important, very good question. So think of the Joomla backend, <coughs> the part we were just working with is, is, is a big house that you, it, someone delivered to you. It's all pre, pre done. It has some features to it, and it's like delivered to you. And now you have the liberty to kind of manipulate how you want that house to look. Okay, and that plumbing is on the back end, and you can um, put a nicer restroom in, or a nicer shower, or um, a huge TV inside. So. But the plumbing is behind it is all done for you. And that way you don't have to worry about HTML that much or using Dreamweaver or learning PHP that much. I mean, if you want to go into advanced features, yes. <laughs> but most of the plumbing is delivered and you are so happy about it. You will be happy about it. Are you happy? Yeah. Okay, good. Now, this uh, component menu that you've given us is pre-configured for our, us as students here. And it represents a core component of what you think are the most functional components that are there? For, for small businesses or organizations, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I mean, you can, there are reasons not to install a ton of extensions. Um, and the main reason is security. You can have security holes in an extension. Um, this is one of the reasons you update extensions regularly. Um, but basically, don't install extensions that you don't need or that you're not going to use, because there's no reason to have a security risk there, which is a possibility. Okay. Or uninstall them if you install and find that you're not using it. Mm -hmm. Think of components as big programs that are just get like, plugged in, and suddenly you have this huge plumbing behind it, and you plug something else, and something else, and something else, and at some point it becomes either overwhelmed or unsecure. So if you find that you're not using the focal gallery or either of those, you can uninstall it, and tomorrow will go through those. Yeah, and like I said, there's two calendar things in there. There's G Calendar and J Events. You're going to uninstall one of them because you don't need two. Um, okay, so the way we got here is actually we're talking about modules. We said ex there's extensions and under extensions there are components, modules, and plugins, and that there's different module positions in a template where you can put things. And there's actually a really cool way to see where those positions are, and on this one it's going to look a little crazy. Don't be alarmed. So on your screen now, you see all the different module positions. You see there's a right position. You can put more than one module in a position. So there's right, there's more right, user 5, user 2, user 1, left. Um, these are all positions. This, this website has a lot of positions. Well, let's go to your website, the front end of your. I typed in question mark TP equals 1, which is what we're going to do right now on your website. Go to the front end of your website. At the end of the URL, question mark TP equals 1. Yes. Now this is a lot less um, scary. So this says right and left, which we're not using either one at the moment. Breadcrumbs, you know, when you say like home and what section you're in, people can s keep track of where they are. Top, that's where the menu is going in the top. News flash up there. If you scroll down, we'll see if there's anything else. There's a footer. Okay. So these are the positions that come with this very simple template. Now let's say you created a whole website and it was beautiful and everything was great and you had a bunch of stuff in the left position and then you installed a different template and that template doesn't have a left position. You will not see any of the modules that you have published on the left. This is the only issue when I said when you're changing templates, this is the thing you need to be aware of. They, don't, they have different positions. There's not really any laws of what you're going to call them. So you might have to move some things around afterwards. If you install stuff, you know, if you have modules in your left position the new template doesn't have a left position, you need to either move it to the right or do something else. So that mapping of those uh, inconsistencies is not something that would be apparent until you bring the template up and you look at it. There's no way to, in a sense, oh. You can go to another website that has a template and do the question mark, TP equals one, look at the positions. But yes, you could also apply the template to just one page instead of the whole website and see, it, see what it is. But that's the thing, to, that's what I said, that there's some complications. That's the complication. It's when you change templates, the positions are not always the same. So if you have something in left, 
it might not be in left anymore, so you need to just kind of look at it. This is not that big a deal. It takes a few minutes usually just to kind of fix it up, um, but just something to be aware of. How does it come to be in left Starbucks? Some guy sitting around said, oh, I'd like to call this left. OK, so I see. So when I, when I chose this template, I happened to choose a template that has an area called left. Exactly. And I put a module in that left. And you decide space. to put it in left, yeah. OK, and then if I apply a different template, it might vanish. It might have vanished. Most people do left and right because they're not stupid. But some people are stupid. And so there, there's no left and right. Instead of calling it top, they call it like, you know, George. You can call it anything you want. So people go a little crazy. But like I said, it's not too complicated. It just involves changing. We're going to go over how to change where things are. It's very easy to do. Okay. So the reason we got there is we were saying that there are extensions. Components. What are components? Okay. No, you're, you're right. Yeah, they add, they're like little programs that run inside of Joomla. And what, what are modules? Um, gadgets. Okay. They, they, they display information, like usually around the edges of your page, but they don't have to. And usually it's information that either you made like yourself, like a little image or something, or they can take information from a component. They can work together. So, um, Alan, what are plugins? Uh. <laughs> okay, so we haven't talked about plugins yet. Yeah. Okay. Um, I was that, so, are modules like a subtype of components? No, modules are a type of extension. So, so think of it extensions, components. Natasha has made this handy list here. Components, modules, and plugins. Plugins are not so easy to describe. Um, they tend to kind of act behind the scenes, but there are ways that you can use them to embed things inside of articles. Like the way you embed a YouTube art video inside of an article is with a plugin. Okay. And we'll, we'll actually, we will embed a YouTube video at some point today. But basically, they're kind of little snips of code, not like programming code, just kind of like, you know, little brackets in the word YouTube and the name of the YouTube video or whatever, inside of an article that, sh that load the video right there. Okay? So now we've gone over all of that. So now what I want you to do, does everyone have a pen? Everyone not, not have a pen? Pencil, pen? Pencil, pen, yes, fine. Take one of the pages that you have, I don't really care very much which, turn it over, and write a site plan. Now, what I want for your site plan is, first we should have a sentence saying what you want your site to be there for. What's the purpose of your website? Are you trying to um, get new inquiries? Are you trying to drive traffic to your store? Are you trying, what are you trying to do? Because this is a good thing to know when you're trying to make a website, okay? The next thing you want to do is you want to say what your menu is going to be. And remember, none of this is set in stone, but this is what we're going to use for today. So some of the menu things you might have, you might have about us, you might have um, cakes, you might have cafe menu, if it's a vegetarian um, thing. So you might have, let's say, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, if that's an option. You might have you know, our weekly plans where we serve you all your meals for a week. We might have um, nutritional information. These are all things. And you can have different articles, obviously, in different, different, different menu items. So that's what we're going to do for like the next five minutes or so, maybe eight. So I want you to let me know if you have any questions during that time. Okay. So you're thinking structure, basically, at this point. And make it as closer as to what you were thinking of when you were coming here. Some of you have your businesses and you can now uh, almost replicate the site map that you have for your business websites. Those of you who are still undecided or thinking through what your idea is, make it as close as to what you would like to have on your website. So that when we finish the seminar or workshop, you can continue working with it and feel like it's yours. Because this is only for you today. And by the end of it, we want to see different sites with different content that you feel ownership of. Okay? 